Good morning. Okay, good. good morning. My name is John Penny, and I'm the Chief Strategy Officer of STARS. And with me today is David Hagen, the CEO and Chairman of Boingo Wireless. And we're here to talk to you about a very exciting development that uh, CTA, the Consumer Technology Association, rolled out in the October timeframe this year. CTA created the first ever for the organization Disruptive Innovation Council. And as you walk the floor today through the various halls here, North Hall, South Hall, at the Sands, and in other areas, you will see numerous examples of technologies that are highly innovative and in the long term may become disruptive to traditional ecosystems and traditional business models, let alone the companies that are creating those new technologies. So the goal here today is to give you a little bit more information and let David talk through uh, what this Disruptive Innovation Council is, how it's bringing benefits to the CTA and its member organizations. And David, thank you so much for spending the time with us this morning. Thanks, John. Great to be here. Great. So why don't we dive in? Can you tell me a little bit about what the Disruptive Innovation Council is and why under Gary Shapiro's leadership at the CTA and at the board level, we created this uh, opportunity for, for the organization? Yeah, it really fits into the vision for the organization overall. So as most people are now aware, we've changed the name of the association to the Consumer Technology Association from the Consumer Electronics Association. And when you think about that, it's a, a much broader tent, a much broader umbrella that represents all of technology. So period, stop, that's the, kind of the, the thought behind the, the name change. The Disruptive Innovation Council then fits right under that. It's, it's a recognition and a collection of companies that represent very innovation, disruptive to existing business models. So they're disruptive companies that are bringing innovation to the market that literally change the way we live. And so some of the, the founding uh, members of, of uh, the council are companies like Lyft, um, Boingo, of which I'm a part, you know, proud to be a, a member of the council, uh, Airbnb, uh, Lyft, uh, Uber, I think I already said Lyft, uh, Nest, Nest uh, MC10, uh, WebMD. WebMD. So Yelp. you think about these, they're already brand name companies, but they're very young companies. And so that's part of the, the criteria that we look at to become part of the council is that they are companies that have been very disruptive, very innovative, and brought major change into major industry categories. And most of them are already household names. So that's the, that's the essence of the council. So, so when, we were, when you were thinking about those types of companies and, and their place in the overall ecosystem that we're seeing here at CTA, how, how do you think of disruption as a new force in the market, as a positive change agent? And if you see any negatives around it that you know, are, are at the top of mind when you think about some of these new companies completely changing the way consumers access goods, services, and other types of, of uh, business opportunities. Yeah, in my mind, disruption is absolutely a positive. And if you think about how we live our lives today and compare that to 10 short years ago, it's completely different. We now have of our hand. We didn't have that 10 years ago, right? That came out really with the iPhone in 2007. And think about the way that's changed the way we live, the way we consume services, the way that we uh, get a ride away from CES, right? The way that we reserve hotel rooms, the way that we reserve vacation rentals when we're going somewhere, the way that literally we do everything Right In the palm of our hand, we can order something from Amazon and have it delivered tomorrow, and very soon it's going to be within a few hours. And those are all innovations that have come from disruptive companies. So to me, those are all great things. I don't think any of us want to go back and live the way we were living 10 years ago, right? It's awesome the way we live now, and that's all because of disruptive, innovative technologies. One of the things I know that we were talking about a little bit earlier on is, is there, because of the times we live in and maybe because of the technology platforms that are evolving with the cloud and, and the movement towards infrastructure to be available on demand, do you see an acceleration in this notion of disruptive innovation both within companies that are circumscribed as doing you know, a single thing, let's use ride sharing as an example, but also this type of acceleration of innovation just 
in mainline companies that may have had strong arc of innovative development and product delivery over the years. So uh, innovation is happening faster and at a much grander scale uh, than ever before. And it's really driven by a, a couple of things. First, there's a lot of capital uh, chasing innovation, but more fundamentally from a technology perspective is that uh, with cloud-based services, a product can be developed, product or service can be developed and it can be put in front of consumers for feedback using agile development technology, using most um, viable uh, product uh, capability or development um, approach. And you can literally get a product in the, in the hands of a target set of consumers in a few months with a few thousand dollars. 10 years ago, before the cloud, you would have to build an IT infrastructure to support that product. It would take hundreds of thousands of dollars, in some cases, millions that literally can be done in someone's garage with a few thousand dollars they can get a product in the in the hands of consumers so innovation is happening much faster and and it's happening at a much uh larger scale the the companies that we mentioned earlier on the uh, disruptive innovation council those are already massive companies but many of them are less than five years old i mean that's incredible so it's happening at a faster pace it's happening at a, a much uh, grander scale the the little um, sort of the fun vignette I like to, to paint for that is if you go back to the movie The Social Network, remember The Social Network about Facebook? And remember when uh, Justin Timberlake, who was playing Sean Parker in the movie, said a million isn't cool, 10 million isn't cool, 100 million isn't cool, a billion is cool. That was a crazy, radical statement 10 years ago. Now there are literally billion dollar companies being hatched right and left. So it's, it's an amazing time for innovation. You know, I like I liked what you were saying in terms of where we are in the overall environment. And I think one of the implications is that the companies in the council may morph and find other homes within the organization and, and become just larger established companies, even if they're not right now. So some of them, as you mentioned, Google and the like, are very large companies. Do you see an inbound flow uh, of, into the Disruptive Innovation Council and then out into a more permanent home and maybe the step after that is how does that fits into the CTA vision I think of a larger umbrella of innovation is there going to be a cycling do you think through the council I think it's inevitable and I think it's um, so it's a great place to start it's a great entryway into this now broader tent the consumer technology association but it is a disruptive innovation council. So if companies on that council weren't at some point being disrupted and then moved out, if you will, or, or maybe into a, you know, a different status, that, then it wouldn't really be what, it was, uh, what the premise was built upon. So no, it'll be, it'll be ever evolving, ever changing. A, Absolutely. Dynamic, a dynamic organization. A, a question for you. So in your world, you're working within the realm, I'll call it broadly, of the wireless industry, both fixed and uh, wide area uh, wireless. What are you seeing, I mean, are there specific examples of what you're seeing where either two to three years ago, a outcomes or, or a strategic trajectory has changed because of a disruptive innovation or your company itself being a disruptor. What are you seeing within the enabling world of wireless that would be sort of an object case for other areas that we could ask a similar question to sort of bring a little bit of a, a real world case study to this? Well, I used to like uh, to say, and not that long ago, that uh, in the very near future that nearly every product, every consumer technology product will have a wireless chip in it, either Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, cellular. And that was kind of a weird thought, kind of a radical thought. Um, it's no longer a radical thought. In fact, if you walk out on the floor, almost every product here has some kind of wireless technology uh, as a part of it. In fact, our chief technology officer at Boingo has a chip in his wrist, right? So that's where it's going. So Literally in he, his he wrist. He has a wireless chip in his wrist that is his card pass to the office and to our parking lot. So the rest of us are fumbling around in our car trying to find our card pass to get into the parking lot. He puts down his window, ho holds his wrist out of the window and uh, opens up the gate. So the kind of crazy thought is not only are all products getting chips inside, but we will too. 
So as humans, we're going to get chips too. So the way to think about that is, it's like what comes after the smartphone, which everybody's been trying to answer that question. Is it smart watches? Is it other smart devices? I think the answer is it just becomes everything, right? So it just it becomes more central to your life. It becomes more embedded uh, in your life, not just in a separate device that you have to access and charge the battery on. Actually, that uh, you, when you said that, it made me think of something that we're at the realm of wearables now. So you'll see a wearables uh, over at the Sands. Wonderful collection. I, I highly recommend you go over to the Sands and spend time. But let's say in CES five years from now, we'll be walking through the implantables section of sensors based on uh, the early uh, evidence from your CTO. Who's in? <laughs> implantables. I'm I'll not seeing it. a lot. Of it. Uh, uh, when, when we think about disruption, or let's just say innovation, it's a classic case in the history of American business. There are winners and losers, or there are technologies that go by the wayside. Carriages were overtaken by the automobile. The buggy whip industry went away. LPs are back, but they're not back at the rate that they were when people really listened to a lot of vinyl. I mean, it's replete, VCR and the like. How do you think about sort of the, the issues of impact that happen, and while there's growth and all the opportunity, how can we think about the impacts of these, not to mitigate, I'm not saying that, but just what are some of the constraints around impact, or some of the thoughts around impact, while disruption, which is natural, normal, and necessary, is occurring? Or it just, we just keep going and we see where it all ends up. Do you have any thoughts on that? Well, I, I think it's very hard to predict what things will look like five or 10 years from now. There are certainly people that are expert at it and they're always fun to listen to. I would not be one of those people. Um, uh, but I, because I, if you just go back to the way things have changed, could you foresee just 10 years ago the way that we'd be doing things? I, I couldn't. So I think we just have to let it happen and we let innovation happen and we let really smart people come up with great ideas and unleash them and don't hold them back and disrupting. Disruption is good. It takes us, I think, is part of the, part of the fun. Yeah, and, and one of the things that I think that uh, Gary Shapiro, the CTA, the board has thought about in the Disruptive Innovation Council is some of the landscape around regulation because technologies are advancing so quickly. We could just use drones as, as an example of a technology that fits into a older regulatory framework that is potentially useful, the FAA and the like. How do you see, is there a concomitant need for government where there is the need for regulation, if there's a need for regulation, to really step up and make sure that these things get squashed? Has that come, have you seen or thought about that sort of issue within the realm of disruptive innovation? I think any any products disruptive can be scary, and I think drones are a great example of that. Drones are literally going to change the way we live in very positive ways. But like most products, like most technologies, they can be used for good and for evil, and so that's the balancing act that that we have to take. What what I think what we try to do at CTA is make sure that the positives of the technologies are understood, and that as an organization and as we can organize industries, like the, the drone manufacturers came out with some of their own guidelines and, and uh, FAA, uh, not certification, but um, registration. And so that was an industry-driven development, not a top-down government-driven development. And I think that's the ideal model. But, you know, there's certainly a role for government to play as well. They, you know, government is here to protect our welfare, and that's a, that's a critical role. So it's working together private industry, government, to come up with great solutions. If it, within your work at Boingo and just being a, a, a student of innovation in the if you were giving advice to companies, and, and your company started as a small company and has a broad presence across the country and across the world, if you were giving advice to uh, companies that were starting up, maybe some how would you talk to them about disruptive innovation as a mindset 
it, can it be, is it something that we observe from the outside, or can it be brought into an organization as either a rapid innovation cycle, nimble, agile? Is there an internal aspect of this that, you know, from council all the way down into, into corporate that can give, you know, a, a, an advantage to companies if they think this way? I think if you look at any startup, it's the fact that they're doing startup, the fact that they're taking the risk, the fact that they're, they probably quit a well-paying job, a good-paying job, to get paid less than half the money, or in some times working for free to get you know, the first uh, iteration of the product out, they already have the juice, right? They already have that innovation, that disruption in their veins, or they wouldn't be doing it. So I don't think we need to coach them on that. I think where the coaching comes in is the inevitable hard, uh, sort of the, the hard rocks that they hit, the, the bumps in the road that they hit. Transition points. And you know, you, you may hear the term pivot, transition points. Right. Most companies just don't go from zero to roaring success without uh, a pivot or two along the way. And certainly at Boingo, we've had several. I, I call what we're on now is Boingo 3.0. It's really more like 15.0, but to keep it simple, we say it's 3.0. It's working 0. nicely now. I can and, attest uh, to that. It but but most startups are going to go through. You have to be disruptive to yourself because you have a vision. You think you know how it's all going to play out. Inevitably, you're wrong. And so then you have to be open enough to new ideas on your original idea to go innovate again and move off in a different direction to ultimately be successful. I think the startups that fail are the ones that don't do that. They cling to the original vision too long, even when the market information coming back, right? The market data coming back is this product doesn't sell, right? So if the product isn't selling, that's market information that any startup has to react to. That's, that's great. Now I know we're wrapping it up, so just to give you a, a quick recap of what we said first. That was great, really appreciate your Thank taking you, the time answering those questions. And then the, the brief recap of what we just said, if you joined us late, is that the Consumer Technology Association created a Disruptive Innovation Council with companies that are high velocity change agents within multiple markets as broad as the travel industry, uh, ride sharing, the sharing economy, search, recommendations, medical, and the like. The reason that we're doing this is because the organization firmly believes that innovation and driving new product, service, and retail, and in general, consumer opportunity will continue to provide a robust CTA, uh, robust CE ecosystem in the United States and will allow our country to remain at the forefront of innovation and delivering products and services that are not only great for our own citizens but for the world. And we really appreciate David's leadership in making that happen along with Gary Shapiro and the rest of uh, the CTA board. Our chairman, Dan Pigeon, is in the audience, so we'd like to thank him too. Thank you, and Dan. And we'd like to thank all of you to, for coming and listening to us this morning. Thanks so much, David. Thank you all.